Okay then, this is a very simple and very cheap DIY ebb and flow hydroponics system. As you can see, it's made from two containers. We've got a, like a siphon valve here. We've got a pump that sits in the bottom container. Down here. And that actually draws air in, mixes it with the water and spits it into here. As it does that, the water fills up, it triggers the siphon valve at the far end, which I'll show you in a moment, and then it drains out, so it's constantly wet and dry. And this grown media type stuff in here is something that I'm just trialling. Um, it's actually a form of ceramic media. Uh, it's a little bit like the clay balls, but a much smaller variety of it. I do actually have a bigger version of this coming as well, which I think will be better than this fine stuff. This is almost like a coarse ceramic grit. It's basically something that drains quickly uh, and doesn't hold on to too much moisture. You don't want it to hold on to too much moisture, otherwise the roots of all these things will start to rot. I want as much oxygen and bacteria to be in the roots uh, and in all this media as possible, you know. So every time the water comes up, it gets fed and then it drains out, and it feeds and drains out. Now as far as the power consumption goes, this little pump is only six watts. So it costs next to nothing to run, and the fact that you don't need a separate air pump means that it's even more efficient. It only pumps 450 litres an hour, which, oh, in gallons per hour, I'll put across the bottom of the screen now, because I don't know that off the top of my head. But it's just a really efficient pump, and I've actually got to turn down quite a long way, because I want this to fill up quite slowly. I don't want to just go boom, 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 like that, you know? I want it to be quite a slow process. Actually, the water's up to here now. So it'll be just about to trigger. You can see where the water line is there. That's how far it comes up before it drains. So this is looking at it from the other end. That's our valve in there. It goes through the bottom of the top container and then it spits down into this bottom container when it gets triggered. So a little bit of water just started to drip out of that drain valve there. And when the water in here gets to a certain point, it'll trigger a proper siphon and then it'll just go and it'll just start pouring out into here. I'll let it trigger the siphon and you'll be able to see the water drain out of here when it does trigger this siphon. The water in the top section where we've got the plants will drain out. It'll reset the valve or the, the siphon because air eventually will be drawn in here as there's no more water left in here to suck out. Uh, it'll create like a, an airlock sort of situation and then the water in here will start coming up until it triggers it again. So we'll watch that and then I'll give you a full list of all the parts and I'll put links to them in the video description. So the flow of water coming from the top is getting less and less and less. It'll eventually splutter and then it'll draw air in to reset it. That's it. The last little bit of water drains out and now this starts to fill up again. So that's our water line here. If we leave it long enough, the water will go all the way up, trigger it again, and then drain out again. It's just a constant cycle. Okay, so this is the bigger stuff that I haven't got enough of, but I'll fill the rest of the pots with this stuff. This looks absolutely perfect for growing in, in a hydroponic sort of environment. It looks way better than the clay beads. I'm really looking forward to using this in my systems. Okay, basically what we've got to make this system is two storage boxes. These are pretty cheap. I think I may have got these on eBay. And this one is 43 litres. You can get these in all sorts of shapes and sizes. I went for two that were exactly the same. In hindsight, I should have maybe picked a one that was, you know, about seven inches for the top. 
and one about you know 10 to 12 inches so it would hold more water for the bottom. This is okay but I'm, I'm aware that when this top section fills up the bottom section does go quite a long way down so it's only just over the pump. The pots that I'm using in there is that. They are 11 centimeter by 11 centimeter pond planters and then we've got the siphon valve. This is actually sold for use in urinal systems so it's actually very cheap as well. I think this might have been under six pounds, under six English pounds and the equivalent bell siphon would be somewhere between 25 to 30 pounds if you're buying it for like hydroponic use so this is a really cheap option. I think this one's classed as five and a half inches. The other thing was that little pump that we saw before I put some media in here that was really just to get the trays to the right level you don't really need that if you've got a, a tray that's the right level or pots that are the right size we've got the grown media which is like some experimental thing that isn't normally sold for hydroponic use which I will be testing and I'll let you know my findings on that and really apart from that I think all we need is the pipe to go from the pump to the top and maybe some nutrients if I want to put nutrients in here I think I'll just be adding water that comes out of my pond filters though because that is any amount enough nutrients for lettuce and that's what I've got in the top of here. Now when I get that bigger growing media I'll fill the remaining five pots with that bigger media. I'll put the same lettuce in there and then I'll be able to compare them to the ones with the finer media in. I think they'll all do pretty well but I do have high hopes for that big one. It definitely looks like it's going to be a good growing media for hydroponics. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you want a list of all those materials, just check out the video description and the pinned comment. Everything's linked to in there. I'll see you next time. And by then, these lettuce should be a little bit taller if they haven't been eaten by slugs and snails.